Hey guys, Tark Mary Face here. Sorry for the poor quality video today. However, uh, I wanted to try something new, low effort, and just focus on the content itself. So I'll give it a shot. Today, style speeds and the style itself. And I'm not here to describe how a style occurs in detail. What I want to talk about is this confusion a lot of pilots have about angle attack and style speed. And the reason I want to talk about this is actually pretty obvious if you think about it. When you're in the classroom and we're talking to you about how a wing stalls, we always mention angle of attack because that's what we talk. That's what we need to know about in order to produce a stall. However, when we're out in the aircraft, we're always talking about the stall speed and not the angle of attack, and that can be very confusing. So I hope to clear up that confusion in today's video. So quick revision: leading edge of a wing, trailing edge of a wing. The line between them is called a chord line. The relative airflow is in the opposite direction of travel and the angle between them is the angle of attack. And how does that affect us? Well, as we increase the angle of attack, that is to say, as we increase that angle between the chord line and the relative airflow, we get an increase in lift up to a certain point, which we call critical angle of attack. This occurs when the airflow struggles to get over the top of the wing and becomes turbulent because it doesn't have enough energy to stick to the top surface. At that point, the wing produces less lift. So, it's all about the angle, not about the speed. Stall occurs at a predetermined angle of attack, known as alpha crit, and not the speed. So that brings us back to our question, why do we talk about stall speed then, if it has nothing to do with speed? To explain that, we're going to go back to another basic concept, forces in flight. I'm not going to th talk about drag and thrust and drag, just lift and weight. In straight and level flight, lift equals weight. Pretty basic stuff, high school physics and basic private pilot stuff. So let's move that to the lift equation. This lift has this equation right here. We've got the coefficient of lift, which is dependent on the wing shape and alpha, the angle of attack. The air density, known as rho, V, which is our airspeed, and the wing surface area. Assuming we don't use flaps, we can't change the wing shape or the surface area. We're assuming we're flying in the same air mass or volume of air, so the density should stay constant. So as a result, there are only two things we can change, angle of attack and airspeed. As we reduce speed, we'll see that lift reduces. However, we want to keep it the same as lift, uh, as weight, to maintain straight and level flight. So the only way to do that is to increase angle of attack, because as we saw earlier in the graph, and as you can see it in this equation, increasing angle of attack increases lift. If we slow down further, we'll have to increase alpha more, and more, and more, and more, until we hit the critical angle of attack. The speed at which you hit critical angle of attack in straight level flight is what we know as the stall speed. So the published stall speed is the speed at which the wing will reach critical angle of attack in straight level flight. That's the published stall speed. In practice though, can the stall speed change? And the answer of course, as you should know, is yes. So let's look at some of the factors that affect it. So we're not looking at all of them, but just uh, these three main factors. First of all is weight. Nice and obvious, if we need lift to equals to weight, and weight increases, we need to increase lift. If you're not speeding up, you're going to need a higher angle of attack. Therefore, as we slow down, we we'll need to increase the angle of attack and angle of attack, increase it more and more and more. But if you start at a higher angle of attack to begin with, you're going to reach critical angle of attack a lot sooner, therefore at a higher speed. So as weight increases, the stall speed is, in is increased as it's reached sooner. Second is flaps. Flaps change the coefficient of lift. As you bring the flaps down, you're changing the cord line and you're changing the shape of the wing as well as the surface area. Sorry, you change the, the shape of the wing which changes the cord line and you may, in some cases, change the surface area on the type of flap being used. And that will in turn increase the coefficient of lift. However, 
if the weight doesn't change we, and we want to maintain a certain level of flight, we're going to have to reduce that coefficient of lift somehow. And of course, the answer is angle of attack, because as you look at that lift equation we saw earlier, wing shape and angle of attack. So if this increases in order to maintain this the same, we reduce angle of attack. So because of that, we're going, as we slow down and we increase angle of attack, we're going to start at a lower angle of attack and therefore reach critical alpha sooner. And as a result, at a, sorry, later, and as a result, at a lower stall speed. So using flaps reduces the stall speed. Third point, G-load, split it in two. The first I want to talk about is turns. That's something you should be familiar with. As you turn an aircraft, what you'll see is that the lift component is off at an angle. However, weight continues to act directly downwards, perpendicular to the ground, because we're talking about gravity. In order to maintain this level turn, that is to say without accelerating upwards or downwards, the vertical component of lift is going to have to equal to weight. The vertical component of lift, due to its very nature, is always going to be less than lift itself. Therefore, lift must be bigger than weight, as it is as weight is smaller than lift. So we're going to have to increase angle of attack again because we're going to need a higher lift value. And as a result, we'll reach the stall speed sooner as we slow down in the turn. This one is the one that really gets people, sudden pitch changes. Every object with mass has something called inertia. And inertia, in very layman terms, is an object's reluctance to change directions. So if you're flying in certain level flight and you apply a very sudden and large upwards pitching uh, control input, for instance, so you pull back on the stick very suddenly and by a large amount, what you'll see is that although the airplane starts to point up almost immediately, during a period of time, the direction of travel will remain unchanged as you overcome that inertia. But of course, that means that the chord line will have a larger difference in angle with the relative flow, i.e. an increased angle of attack. And you could quite easily reach critical angle of attack. So what does this tell us? This tells us that we can stall at any speed. A wing can stall at any speed. You could be flying at 300 knots in a Cessna 172, and if you did pull all of a sudden on the elevator, apart from ripping the wings off, you would actually stall them. All right, if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below. I'd be ha uh, happy to help. A uh, couple of plugins. First off, if you're watching this video, you may very well be in the middle of your training or revising or whatever, but if you're looking at a career in the airlines, especially if you're in the US, Go to Rod Machado's website, link in the description below, um, for the article, Your Airline Career. It's a really good article telling you all you need to know about becoming a professional pilot. On the website, of course, it's got loads of really fantastic products, including courses on aerodynamics. And if you buy one of those products using the link below, I get a kickback. So thank you very much. And some people have been using that link, so thank you so much to those people. Uh, the other one I want to talk to you about is a new app called Avion Log. It's just come out. And again, this is especially useful for people just starting in, uh, in aviation because it's an electronic logbook, a very versatile, fully functional electronic logbook with really, really cool features. It is a fraction of the price of Log 10 Pro. And because they're in a trial phase, you can get up to six months uh, absolutely free if you go and you download it right now. Um, and of course, the developers would really like your feedback on how they could improve the app. Uh, advantages over Log10 Pro is redundancy in data storage. You can store it up th to three different, um, two different uh, cloud-based systems and uh, physically on any device where the app is installed. Really good app. I'm using it myself right now. Uh, it's about a less, it's about a third of the price of Log10 Pro with more versatility. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time and happy flying.